We are eight weeks into the baseball season, and we've already had two perfect games and a no-hitter. And on Saturday, it was Roy Halladay with his perfect game against the Florida Marlins, a game that I was like, I have to go to this game, and I couldn't find anyone to go with, <laughs> and I ended up not going. What a dummy. I know, I they know. Had, they had, like, 25 to 30,000 people there. That's a big crowd for a Marlins game. Yeah. And our producer, Mikey Friedman, says it, it stinks not having friends. It does. It does. All my friends are out of town. I was Memorial driving back Day. from Key West, by the way. And you're wearing the Key West shirt. Very good. Five yeah. bucks. For the Key West shirt? Yeah, you go to Key West. They, you walk into these stores. They're like, T-shirt, five dollar, five dollar. <laughs> T-shirt, five dollar, five dollar. <laughs> That's how they sound in Key West? No, it just happened to be a guy who's Cuban or something. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, welcome to the uh, Fantasy Baseball Update on Sunday, May 30th. Speaking of perfect, uh, I'm 8-0 in our podcast league. Wow. I keep on winning. But, but, Scott, I do believe you have the best team. i got to give you credit for yeah. that. You're crushing everyone. First in points there. We're going to get you all ready for Week 9, help you set your lineup, tell you who to start and sit. Big-time injury news as Kendry Morales is out for a long time. We'll tell you how long Grady Sizemore has surgery. Um, all that's coming up. Two star pitchers you need to take a look at. Uh, and, of course, we'll get to your emails at dmfantasybaseball at cbs.com. D is in doctor, M is in Mac, and we'll be paging him <laughs> shortly. Uh, before we get into the injuries, about half uh, I stole that from an emailer, by the way. Um, about half the league plays seven games this week. The rest plays six. But here are the teams that play seven. Minnesota, the Dodgers, Kansas City, Oakland, the Angels, the Yankees, Seattle, Detroit, Atlanta, Washington, Cleveland, Florida, Houston, and Milwaukee. I know that's a lot of names to digest. I already so tuned you out. Check it out on the website. Injuries, news, and notes, and we start with Kenji Morales. Walk-off grand slam, and then he breaks his leg Ugh. celebrating. Then this is a serious How injury. Is that? A possibility that it's a season-long injury. Right now, what do we know? Well, I, I broke my ankle before. Doc, that's why I'm Dr. Emac. I've broken just about every bone in my body. And uh, <laughs> very similar <laughs> and situation. I could have had surgery, but he's yeah. a professional athlete. I didn't necessarily need surgery. He's going to be out until at least September, and it's very possible that they'll just shut him down for the season if they're not in the race come September. So if you are in a, a, a league that's tight on um, roster spots, uh, you could you can consider cutting uh, Kendrick Morales. He might not be just a few weeks at the uh, tail end of the season, that's all you'll get out of him. Now, big development, Mike Napoli played yeah. first base that's, on Sunday, That's Scott. the silver lining to this here. I mean, obviously, Morales is terrible news for the most part, but Napoli, starting at first base, they qu called up Rob Quinlan, so you know they're not going to go with him at <laughs> first. Napoli looks like the guy at least uh, part of the time, and that is enough to know, well, he's going to keep getting consistent at bats even after Jeff Mathis comes back. He's been heating up. Uh, hitting 319 with five homers over his last 14 games. And that's that's what you expected from Napoli when you first picked him up, when Mathis went on the DL. Now that it's there, now that the at-bats are going to continue, now that he might not even have to sit as often as most catchers if he's playing at, at first base instead, I like him uh, as a long-term option at the position in all leagues. So if he's still available out there somewhere, probably not since he's been heating up, but if he is, you're going to want to pick him up. Grady Sizemore is set to have left knee surgery. He'll be out six to eight weeks. So is that uh, good news for Trevor Crow? Owners? Well, I, I don't think he's really going to be out six to eight weeks because this is this is somewhat similar to the Carlos Beltran thing. And Beltran um, did end up coming back late last year, but you know he had some more issues with it in the off season. Still, really hasn't come back from it, even though his original timetable was something like six. So to you eight think weeks. it's longer? Yeah, I think it's longer and. Um, on the chat I did today, actually, someone asked me if, if it was justifiable to drop Sizemore. Yes. Obviously, if you have a DL spot, there's no reason to. But yeah. if you don't and uh, you need that extra bench spot, you could drop him. And we said when he, when he went down, they said bone bruise, and that is the first signal to microfracture surgery. No good. Uh, what do you guys think about Carlos Guillen as a second baseman? I like it. Yeah? A little <laughs> versatility. He can hit the ball. <laughs> when does he get eligibility? Uh, five games. I believe he's only gotten, what, two? So we'll so. look for Napoli and for Guillen to become eligible at multiple positions soon. Andre Ethier, will he be back for week nine? He will. Yes. Right? And you can start him. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Carlos Zambrano starts Wednesday against the Pittsburgh It's Pirates. a little bit of a bummer that they held him back to Wednesday. I wish they could have gotten him a two-start week. But it's, week. it is the Pirates, and even if he goes five, six innings, um, you know, I think he should be in most lineups. Okay, Jason Bartlett, he left in the fourth inning Saturday. 
with a hamstring injury, and he's been slumping. They moved him down in the batting order. Um, what do you guys think about Bartlett? Should we sit him in week nine? Hamstrings are bad. Yeah, you should probably sit him because there's no reason to take the chance on him with the way he's been slumping. But it's interesting just looking at the shortstop position. We say, oh, he's been slumping all year, hitting around 230 or whatever it is. Going into this weekend, he was the seventh-ranked shortstop in head-to-head leagues. Really? <laughs> yeah, as awful as he's been. So um, he's he's not a guy you're going to want to like give up on long-term, but this week there's too much of a risk there. Now, we're recording this on Sunday night. So make sure you check us out Monday afternoon, even though it's Memorial Day. We're working. Well, I'm not, but oh, everybody we're else involved is. Oh, we're That's working Fantasy on Baseball today, live noon Eastern with Lauren Shahadi, Aresis Estrada, and our three Fantasy Baseball experts. And I analysts. just looked at the schedule. The first game starts at 105, so you'll get all your up-to-the-minute, last-second information. There you go. Right on CBSSports.com. All right, a few more notes. <laughs> Sorry about that. A few more notes. Dontrell Willis designated for assignment. Max Scherzer was recalled. Scherzer struck was out he any good? 14 <laughs> He re- He Sunday. recorded 17 outs, 14 via strikeout. Wow. <laughs> Great start for Scherzer. Armando Galarraga also stays in the rotation for the Tigers. What do you guys make of all this? Uh, Scherzer's a must-add. I picked him up in just about every league when I, I saw he had nine strikeouts through the first four innings. Uh, was it nine? Yeah, it was nine. Maybe. Maybe ten. Okay. Well, whichever. <laughs> but it was a lot, and I picked him up. And he's a must add. I uh, I yeah. agree with all of that. I do want to caution some people just looking, uh, getting kind of a temperature reading of public perception on Scherzer uh, during the chat I just did. People's expectations are going through the roof just because yeah. of the 14 strikeout performance. And the thing is, okay, all those strikeouts are great. It still meant too many pitches. It still meant he couldn't go six innings. It still meant it was his first start coming back up from the minor leagues because he was so inconsistent before. Right. It's not like he hasn't shown uh, this great strikeout potential before that, that you know, showed what kind of potential he has. So it, it, he's a must-add because that potential is there and because he showed some signs of it. But I don't think he's immediately a must-trust Every week in your starting lineup, kind but of guy. At Kansas City still or versus be a lot Kansas City, I think that's a good matchup for him. What about Galarraga? He's just an AL only yeah, option. Yeah, just not much upside. matchups based to put him in your lineup at mixed leagues if he gets two favorable starts. Okay, Brian McCann for Atlanta. He's been missing some starts with a strained right quad. Yeah, they say he's going to be back. Um, I think it's Monday or Tuesday, whenever the Braves' week starts. Bobby Cox said he's going to be back in the lineup. Well, they play seven games, so okay, so it'll be Monday. Monday. And even it, even at the catcher position, this is kind of different from most. But even if there is some risk of him missing a game or two at the beginning of the week, you know, who are you going to get off the waiver wire instead? Unless somebody like Mike Napoli's out there, right? You got to run uh, McCann out for half a week. Dr. Emac. I can't believe you buried one of the leads of uh, fantasy. Nelson Cruz back yes, to the I DL. Yes, I totally missed the – but you know why? I, I know you're going to get to anybody <laughs> I miss, so <laughs> not a Yeah, big deal. so Nelson Cruz back to the DL. Jacoby Ellsbury back to the DL. These guys are going to need at least two weeks. It's uh, very unfortunate because they, they have so much potential and they come back, you say, okay, now my team's ready to take off, and it's just right back to the DL. Josh Beckett's not ready. He was hoping to go Thursday. He's going to be out for Fantasy Week 9. Tim Wakefield gets a start in his place. Uh, Wakefield's got a, a de- decent matchup, I believe. Uh, I think it's uh, Baltimore. Uh, I'll let you know. It is Oakland and Oakland. Baltimore next week, so it's one Oakland. of those two. It's Oakland. Uh, decent matchup, so you could perhaps use Wakefield coming off that terrible start he had last time out. Uh, Carlos Beltran, out till at least the All-Star break, uh, Omar Minaya told the New York media, and it's, it's just – it keeps getting worse and worse, and it's just unfortunate that he didn't just have microfracture surgery when it when he came down with the injury la- late last May, or last May last year last May. Right. Um, yeah, so he's he's uh, he's a guy. If if you're in a mixed league and you're struggling for roster spots, you might want to even cut him. Like uh, maybe not the the Sizemore treatment because Sizemore's a little behind. Um, with that Sizemore surgery, uh, we should mention, they're going to go in and see what the damage is, and uh, they might consider microfracture surgery on Sizemore as well. Um, and then uh, Brad Lidge is returning to the team. He won't go immediately into the closer's role, but just the fact that he is a, a closer with potential, 
you gotta you gotta pick him up and stash him for a few weeks to see if you can get uh, those saves for the Phillies. And don't, then don't cut a, Jose Contreras though. No, you gotta see what Lidge. Uh, uh, and then we got well. uh, you mentioned Bartlett, but we got some other guys that are banged. Oh, uh, you mentioned McCann, McCann too. Uh, Joey Votto's uh, banged up with his neck. He's been missing games. Polanco's banged up with his elbow, been missing games, and uh, Bobby Jenks is banged up. We'll have these updates on Fantasy Baseball today, tomorrow.